So today's video is a little bit different. In many ways, it's very much the same. It involves me repairing a MacBook, and it's sponsored by iFixit, one of my favorite companies to work with. But in other ways, this MacBook is unlike anything you've ever seen before. I am very curious to see what this thing actually looks like, so let's crack it open. Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! What? How, how does this even happen? Why would someone do this? Oh my god. I have never in my life seen anything as bad as this. I can see, I can see you guys through the screen. I, I bought this with the hopes of maybe fixing it but look at the shape. I, I don't know how much, how much I can really do about this. Now, it looks like whoever was sawing this thing, they, they didn't get all the way through it. So, I don't know, maybe we could stand a chance of having a decent logic board here. Oh my God, I don't even know if it has an SSD. This is the function keys model, so the SSD is removable. It might be gone. But let's see if we can try to boot it up, I guess. The display turned on. The external display. I'm not hearing anything. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, no signal. Did I just hear the charging sound? Fans are coming on. Excuse me? How does this thing work? Does the keyboard work? Okay, wait, this is the, this is the big test here. Does the trackpad do anything? Okay, no. <laughs> that... That is to be expected considering the trackpad is almost completely cut in half. Yeah, and the keyboard doesn't work either. But <laughs> it freaking booted. What? That is genuinely, yeah, the battery, there's no battery. So I'm just gonna unplug this thing. You've got to be kidding me. Someone literally took what looks like a circular saw to this thing, and it works. That is genuinely unbelievable. I gotta buy some parts for this thing. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. All right, well, we're in business, folks. Let's get cracking. Against all odds, this thing somehow still works. So before we take it apart, let's examine the scale of the damage. Along the front, you can see the size of the gash where the saw tore through the screen, the trackpad, the top case, and the bottom case. Opening up the device, it doesn't get a whole lot better. Clearly, the keyboard deck was under a lot of strain when the device was sawed and bent, so we're missing keys. Some of the keys don't really work. The bottom strip of glass below the display is completely shattered. The display has turned into dust where the saw went through it, and the trackpad hasn't fared all that much better. It's almost completely cut in half. This thing is absolutely annihilated. So given that, I'm curious to hear what you guys think happened to this MacBook Pro. Let me know in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's see if we can repair this thing. All right, so when we're talking about actually getting this thing repaired, obviously the big damage 
has has missed the logic board and i'm fairly confident that this was done intentionally not by some freak accident because they've definitely removed the battery otherwise the thing would have literally exploded you know if they left the battery in here so this was definitely on purpose not sure why they also uh cut through the hinge here a little bit maybe to help bend the thing the whole thing's kind of potato chipped a little bit and as a result i'm definitely concerned about the degree of the bend in the logic board i imagine that's not going to be fun but fortunately i've got the tools for the job here i fix it sent over their manta screwdriver kit this thing is a beast you could probably build a house with this and one other little fun feature that i like on ifixit screwdriver kits is there's like a little uh, compartment tray for organizing your screws in the lid and there's plenty of room on a kit that's this massive so that is going to definitely help uh, the other thing that's going to help is the replacement parts now obviously there's not a whole lot that we can do <laughs> the top case the display and the bottom case have all been sawn in half so not going to be reusable there so what i've done is get some replacement parts and because i'm fun we're going to make this computer silver it is space gray but that's not how it's going to stay i got the silver top case mainly because it was cheaper and then i got the rest of the silver components to match and fortunately as we saw when we booted it up there's already an ssd in this thing so that should be it let's get into it so with the plan set, it was time to get to work. The first step was to remove the mangled bottom cover, which took a decent bit of effort. The inside of the device is a horror show. Bits of aluminum dust that came out of the bottom case have melted, and the force touch trackpad has been completely sawn in half. You can see the copper cabling for the Taptic engine that's just been cut clean in two. Removing the bottom case also gives us a glimpse at the logic board and it does not look good. Right, so with the bottom case off, I am definitely concerned about the bend in the logic board, particularly here on the heat sink. It feels like the heat pipe has bent. So hopefully that isn't putting a lot of pressure on the CPU. Hopefully that'll be able to straighten back out, but I'm really not sure. The other thing I'm not sure about is the antenna. So it goes along the back here. It screws into the heat sink on both sides and it's basically just a long plastic antenna and it's also where the ventilation housing is and it is bent pretty badly. Fortunately, it hasn't been sawed through, I don't think. So hopefully we'll be able to salvage this without having to replace it, but I, I want to get this logic board out of here. It's a little scary. So with that, it was time to extract the board. As I pried the board out from the top case, I desperately hoped that it wouldn't be permanently bent. However, I was not so lucky. There is a pretty significant bend to this thing, even when removed from the computer. But setting that aside for now, it was time to move over the other speaker as well as the fan to the new top case. Next, it was time to salvage what we could from the display assembly. So obviously, the display itself, as well as the connector board, are very significantly damaged and we're not going to be able to use those. However, we do need the antenna, as well as all of the screws that hold this assembly together.
With the display now attached, it was time to put in the bent logic board. Right, so this is the scary part. See, this side of the board is put in and seated and it's sitting in just fine. But look at the other side of the board. Oh dear. This thing is bent pretty bad and I'm really nervous about the amount of pressure that it's gonna take to hold it all in place. So this is a little nerve wracking. With the board clamped down and everything screwed into place, it was time for the moment of truth. did it, yay. It's hard to believe that we went from this to this, but here we are. And yeah, it might look like a completely new computer because it mostly is, but there was actually a surprising amount of components from the original, I'm gonna call this the Sawbook Pro, that we were actually able to salvage. So number one is all of the screws. None of the replacement parts I, I bought came with any of the screws needed to put this thing together, so I was able to use all of those. I was also able to use the speakers, both left and right, the fan, the SSD, and even the antenna. I'm also impressed that the logic board worked considering that there was a, a permanent bend in the actual logic board. Uh, I was a little nervous that I might have to replace the heatsink because it might have been warped, but everything seems to be fine. Now granted, when I say seems to be fine, that's because I haven't had this thing put together for like months and there is absolutely no guarantee that this won't break eventually. This is definitely not a reliable way to get yourself a working MacBook. And in fact, while we're on the subject, you might be wondering if this was actually cost effective. Was it actually cost effective to buy a MacBook that someone tried to saw in half with a table saw and then build it back into a silver MacBook Pro? Well, I paid $120 for the Sawbook Pro, which seems like a lot, until you realize that the logic board was working and those usually sell for about $400. So maybe not the worst deal. Uh, I paid $130 for the top case, I paid $23 for the bottom case, and I paid $331 for the display. So in total, it was about $600, which is exactly retail value for one of these things. So I basically just bought one of these for average price, but with a lot more steps and a lot more uncertainty. So yeah, I, d I wouldn't recommend it. I also wouldn't recommend sawing your MacBook in half with a table saw. That's, a, that's another one I wouldn't do. But I'll tell you what I would recommend, and that is iFixit's Manta screwdriver kit. I didn't even scratch the surface of this thing to repair a lowly MacBook such as this. I mean, you really are just spoiled for choice with this amount of screwdriver bits. I mean, it's even got this this thing, I, I don't even know what I would do with this, but it's here. If for whatever reason you do want to buy a MacBook that has been sawed in half, iFixit is a great place to go for repair guides as well as parts and tools. So definitely check those links out in the description below. Big thanks to them for sponsoring. And my goodness, I, I, I cannot believe that this thing worked. I, I've said it before, uh, my, the face that I made when I booted this thing up for the first time, definitely still holds true today, just looking at this computer sitting here as if nothing ever happened. Golly, this feels like one of those videos that's either gonna get like 50,000 views or a million views. If it gets a million, comment down below this timestamp and I'll heart the comment. That's a deal that I'll make you. So get this video to a million views. 
then maybe someone will feel bad for having done this. Or wait, maybe they would feel good because then the video did well and they would do it again. Don't do it again. Whoever is the owner and proprietor of the table saw that cut this thing in half, please stop. I don't recommend it. I, I want you guys to know, I genuinely did not know if this computer was gonna work. I just saw the listing with that, that cut and I was like, I, I gotta try it. For 120 bucks, I gotta try it. And lo and behold, it ended up working. If you have any theories on how this situation came to be, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you find any more listings where people have just posted absolutely demolished MacBooks, send them my way. I'd love to take a look at another one. I love this type of project. It's really fun and a little bit stressful sometimes, I'll admit. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.